were both involved in a campaign called Save Our Sperns and it's to protect our land, our water, our air, our health from the toxic pollution of gold mining. Um, in recent times, a Canadian gold mining company has applied for planning permission for a gold mine on, in this beautiful area of the Spearn Mountains. It's an area of outstanding natural beauty and it's got a lot of other de special designations and um, the company has applied for a cyanide processing plant, a, a mercury furnace, tailings ponds, a huge waste dump and all associated infrastructure and we are worried that it will cause devastation to the land, to farming, to fishing and to the health of the people. That's all. And then Cormac, you say a quick word. The, like the local people in this area, they, there are families that have been living here through difficult, good times and difficult times. And they really appreciate and like the natural beauty of this unspoilt area. And people are really scared that this Canadian company is coming in to despoil, to rip the wealth out of the country, rip the heart out of the country by, by digging it and taking away the wealth and taking away the heart of the community and at the same time leaving nothing but a toxic waste for future generations. And we're really worried for the children and our children's children. That's and great. wanted to be seen to do something about it. People overworking Just to pay the rent Keep their heads above the water Their backs are broken bent They live like rats in cages And never make a sound we never see their faces To the burning to the ground Sick of life in your town Where the dreams go down the drain Where the sun can't shine for darkness And angels fall like Blessing to your twisted point of view. No more with taking lessons from the likes of you. No more will there be sorrow. Dreamt I saw them laughing, and I dreamt there was no pain. But they shot a man for dreaming. Imagine what he'd say when everyone is equal and every life is worth the same. James Orr and I'm the director of Friends of the Earth in Northern Ireland and I've come to Uncreggan Visitor Centre 
many times in the last three years because um, it's a center of beautiful creativity. It's a gateway to the Spurn Mountains. Um, there's always activity taking place and it's run by the community for the community. And I think that's why um, seeing the exhibition here and knowing what the exhibition does, it celebrates the really important landscapes and the people from the Sparren Mountains. And I think the Sparrens for years has maybe been far too neglected. But now, unfortunately, it's in the sights of some of these global corporations, you know, from agri agribusiness to global mining interests, that will forever change this landscape and destroy it. And the rivers that I've come to know, like the Owen Killew and the Owen Ray, they will be no more. You know, these toxic cyanide plants, you know, from gold mining and other mining will forever destroy the landscape and the community. And there's a community here that's so special and so important. And that's why I think your exhibition, you know, celebrating what we have before these people come to destroy it is the only way to save the Sparrow Mountains. Unless people love where they live, and the love comes out of these beautiful photographs. Unless people love where they live, they can't protect it. They'll not take a chainsaw to it. They'll not fill it full of chemicals and cyanide and arsenic and lead. So the, the future of this place is, is twofold. There's like a spectre, a monster, which is Delradian, you know, that will forever destroy it. Um, and I don't use those terms lightly because this is what mega gold mining projects do. Or the community, you know, through fishing, through tourism, through farming, through um, local businesses, local enterprises reinvesting in themselves. That's the choice that, that faces the Spurns. Living Close to the Land by J.P. McMenamin An old man leaned upon his hoe and spat a spittle at his toe looked back up at the finished row with a look of satisfaction Summer was coming to an end the listless leaves did gently bend waiting for the wind to send a breeze to set them free an autumn smoke was in the air, full of sadness and despair. Crows no more flew in a pair, but sat morose and surly. The old man glanced down at his feet. A robin gave a cheeky tweet, and cocked his little head so neat. A harbinger of winter. The wind upon his furrowed face was coming from a colder place and the planets spinned an eternal race and no one could say why the seasons come, the seasons go bringing flowers, sun and snow and man gets caught up in the flow and then dies without an answer but any man who works with clay can understand it's nature's way and must join in and bravely play the game that ends in death. He sees a hearse go by a slap, takes off his old and wear-worn cap, while waiting for the cold, cold tap of death upon his shoulder. He can hardly remember his brother's name, and yet his cheeks can burn with shame. As he feels again the stinging cane in his childhood long ago. He prays that death comes in the night to slip away without fear or fright. One thing he fears with all his might and that's to become a burden. He looks around with tired gaze, no clear horizon, just a haze. Trap, aye, trapped in life's cruel maze, till Gabriel blows his horn. The old man gives a tired sigh, no tear runs from dried up eye. Below the earth, above the sky, and me somewhere in between. The old man grasps his well-worn hole, 
and starts upon another row. Feet the trailing and head hung low, while screaming children play. <laughs> 